Okay, hello YouTube. Today we're going to be continuing to explore the Nidorf variation of Sicilian after e4, c5, knight of 3, d6, d4, cd4, knight d4, knight of 6, knight c3, a6 begins the Nidorf. And in this video we're going to be taking a look at like oddball replies like h3, queen f3, and a4. And if you like content like this and you want to see more of it, uh, please go ahead and click that subscribe button and click on your notification icon. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I covering all three of these variations together? It's because I have the same recommendation against all three. In all three of these situations, white is going to be playing moves that don't fit into a normal dragon variation. So my recommendation is to turn this into a dragon variation. So if you're already familiar with kind of the plans and the ideas on how to play the dragon variation, you might not even need this video uh, because you're already kind of familiar with what the plans are and you'll understand immediately why we're going to be up-tempo in those plans if we transpose this into a dragon. But if you're not, you know, or if you want to know how to play against these specific differences, hang out, watch the rest of this. So the first one, and probably the most reputable that we're going to go over, is H3, which is called the Adams Attack. And it's the only one of the three that I think actually has a name that I could find. If you know the name of these other two, like Queen F3 or A4, please let me know in the comments, because I have no idea what they're called. Uh, so I recommend G6 against um, H3, but a cute move that you could try is you could try B5, because... There was this one little mistake in my 60 memorable games where after knight d5, uh, Fisher in his notes mentioned that Nidorf could have played e6. And after knight f6, queen f6, Fisher recommended the um, questionable move pawn to c4, which is apparently quite bad um, because black can immediately equal heads with the move pawn to d5. The issue being this, that there's a very serious threat here. So the very natural c takes d5 would be met with bishop to b4, where the knight on d4 would be hanging if the bishop blocks. So the king would have to go to the e2 square. There is a razor's edge line where white still holds equality here, but white ends up down a pawn. Uh, you can play e takes d5, e takes d5, and then bishop e2, and then after bishop b4 check, bishop d2, bishop c5, bishop e3, takes, and then bishop f3. I have no doubt Fisher would have found this. Uh, he managed to find um, the one line that was close to equalizing in his um, uh, uh, candidates match game against Petrosian, where uh, he ended up in a nearly lost position with the white pieces as well. So I have a feeling if this had actually showed up on the board that he probably would have found this line, and he would have equalized and then gone on to beat his opponent because Fisher was so good. Uh, but it's easy equality for black after the recommended line, so that makes it kind of tempting to play b5 just because maybe somebody's going off of this uh, preparation, and this is bad. Uh, but if they play something else, like if they play a4, this is just slight edge white. So I've always just ignored this line completely and uh, just gone for transposing into a dragon with a move like g6. So the whole point of playing a Yugoslav-type setup with a move like g6 is because if we play like a regular Yugoslav here with bishop e3, f3, queen d2, castle's queenside, and those of you familiar with the Yugoslav are familiar with this setup, uh, white will try to play for mate eventually by playing pawn h4, h5, etc., and then exchanging off the dark squared bishop and playing for mate. But if we've already played pawn to h3, that means that we're two-stepping that pawn, whereas the move eight, a6 is a lot more useful because black almost always wants to play b5, in the dragon, especially after he's transferred this knight to the e5 square, and he can plop it down on c4 and open that b file. So this is just, this inclusion of a6 and h3 is just more useful for black than it is for white under 90% of all conditions. So we've got a couple games here to look at. Um, this does get played on the top level. Out of these three variations, the Adams variation, the Adams attack is the most reputable. Um, so we have a game here between uh, Magnus Carlsen and um, Hikori Nakamura played in Norway in 2017. Uh, Carlsen continued with g3. That game continued knight c6, bishop e3, bishop g7, bishop g2, castles, castles, uh, knight d7, b3, knight d4 takes, and a bunch of exchanges happened, and basically the position ended up relatively equal. Uh, after all the material came off, this position was relatively equal, and Nakamura actually managed to get a draw, so we know that it's equal, because Magnus Carlsen has this ridiculous plus score against Nakamura, like, it's actually, like, really, really bad, so if Nakamura somehow managed to draw this against Magnus, we know that black is at least equal here, possibly slight advantage black, uh, because... <laughs> because Nakamura did manage to pull off the draw. Now, g3 is a little passive, so, I mean, you could try g4. 
Now, somebody actually tried this against Nakamura, uh, believe it or not. Ian Nepomniche tried this against Nakamura in 2020. And, of course, Ian Nepomniche, his opening preparation is uh, top-notch with the white pieces. Uh, but, of course, uh, he also has a, um, a, 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 very recently, he has a bad score against Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> up, until, up until the World Championship match, he had a pretty good score against Magnus Carlsen. Um, but this game continued bishop g7, bishop g2, castles, bishop e3, knight c6. So we're seeing these same themes repeated over and over again. People are just playing this like a dragon. We had queen d2, knight d4, bishop d4, b5. So Carlson is just taking advantage of the fact that he's got in this a6 move and he can play b5. And he is just trying to get as good of a position as he can. So after b5, we have uh, g5, knight h5, and then bishop g7, exchanging off the dark square bishop, and then finally e5. So uh, it's an interesting question. Like, what happens if uh, white plays pawn to e5 here? Well, in this case, uh, there is kind of this weird kind of computer line, but basically the idea is, is that there's kind of a cascade of threats here. So if we play d takes e5, bishop a8, e takes d4, we're attacking this knight, and then the bishop on a8 still needs to kind of find an escape route. And we've gotten already a pawn and a piece for the exchange, and white still hasn't castled. So this position is apparently just advantage black. So the line given by the machine is knight e4, knight d7, knight g3, knight e5, bishop g2, and then knight c4 is just major advantage black, apparently. Uh, black should have a winning attack here. So that's apparently why uh, Nepomniche continued with g5, uh, knight here, takes, takes, d5, rook a7 got played, castles queenside, rook d7, and black is totally okay here. Black is at least equal. This is maybe even slight advantage black from this point. Uh, white isn't really able to get much of an attack here, and Magnus Carlsen did in fact go on to win. So taking a look at those other two variations, uh, the ideas are going to be very similar against these other two moves, against queen f3 and against a4. So we'll just take a look at a couple of sample lines here. So against queen f3, and actually I got a kind of a funny story here um, behind the move queen f3. Uh, way back, I think it was in 2001 or 2003, so this tells you how old I am. Um, I was the uh, club champion of the uh, chess castle back in Minnesota, and we got a um, person that came in from... Belarusia, a player by the name of Stanislav Spintokin, who was a Grandmaster Elect. And he came and he played at the club for the very first time. And, um, you know, at the time I was like considered like the strongest player at the club. But of course, you know, Stanislav came and then he was like the highest rated player at the club for that day. And uh, he came in and he actually ended up moving to Minnesota full time. And um, it was really cool. We became very good friends. And uh, he was uh, playing a game against the uh, uh, the person that ran the chess club back then, a guy by the name of Dan Vogue, and this was his favorite move. He loved playing queen f3 against the uh, night orf. And uh, Stanislav, you know, replied in a typical Shinigan uh, style with like e6 and b5, etc. And uh, uh, I remember uh, one of the club regulars, who a guy rated like about 18, 1900, I can't remember exactly who, uh, I was watching the game and he was standing next to me and he said, he said to me, oh, that's what you play against that move, queen f3, you know, and um, anyway, so Stanislav uh, ended up actually losing the game against Dan Voge. It was the only game he lost in the tournament. And I think I, I think actually I went on to win the tournament, uh, but, you know, Stanislav lost the game against Dan Voge. And uh, after the tournament was over, you know, he, he, under, he figured out I was a strong player and we sat down and we started talking and I started talking about his one loss. And uh, I showed him, I said, yeah, I've played this position against Dan a whole bunch of times. I just played G6. And Stanislav said to me, oh, that's what you play against that. <laughs> so he had the exact same reaction as the 1900. But, uh, you know, the 1900 just thought, hey, I'm, I was, you know, I was just barely a master. And here Stanislav was a real pro, so he must really know. And uh, But it turned out that uh, Stanislav didn't know uh, what the best reply to queen f3 was, and really it's just to transpose it back into a dragon. So anyways, this is still the move I recommend. Just transpose this back into a dragon. It makes white's position actually very, very awkward, especially after queen f3. Um, the very natural move, I mean, I've got this one game, uh, Kirkenshauser versus Grischuk. The very natural move here is h3, uh, just to prevent bishop g4, bishop g7, bishop e3, castles, g4, and then bishop d7, because you do kind of have to prep knight c6. Uh, castles and then knight c6 and all of black's pieces are on very natural dragon squares but 
uh, black is going to be doing everything from here on out, kind of with tempo. So like queen g2, rook c8, uh, bishop b2, knight a5. We're just doing all the normal uh, dragon plans, but we're just kind of ahead of the game on a lot of this stuff. So this was actually a really solid game, uh, so I'll just show the rest of it. g5, knight e8, h5, uh, black sack to the exchange, normal dragon exchange sack, bc3, queen c8, uh, rook d3, queen c5, just now going after the now weakened uh, black king h5, knight c7, uh, rook c8, bringing the rest of the pieces in. Notice there's no risk on the dark squares. If they play queen h7, you have king f8. And this is an issue, like, if you try to play this the way this guy did, which makes sense, because if you're going to play h3, you kind of try to justify it by playing h3 and g4, and but that blocks this bishop from ever getting exchanged. So th there's really kind of some fundamental issues with these um, uh, weird kind of variants that turn back into the dragon because it's very difficult to do a lot of the normal stuff that you would want to do in the Yugoslav attack, especially if you end up playing something like h3, g5, and g4, and g5. Now your dark squared bishop is forever going to have difficulties trading off for black dark squared bishop. So knight c4, uh, bishop c1, e5, knight b3, queen c6. Um, basically, black just continues the assault, brings his pieces into the game. He had knight f4 for a couple moves in a row, but he, he wasn't in a rush to do it because that rook had nowhere to go. Uh, so eventually he does take his exchange back and he brings the knight to a4 and the game is basically over. Knight, knight c3 is going to happen and uh, white had had enough, so he just resigned. So that's kind of a, a guide on how to handle queen f3 and that's kind of how the majority of my games with the dragon looked. Uh, black conducts a normal dragon strategy and white does something weird that doesn't quite work out. So the other way they can do this is they can play a4 and again this is going to be very similar. Uh, we have uh, a4, g6, bishop e2, bishop g7. Uh, castle's kingside actually makes the most, most sense if you're going to play a4. And with a lot of these variant strategies like h3 and g4 or queen f3 or a4, it makes a lot more sense for white to try a castle's kingside approach than a castle's queenside approach, because at least then he can just play in the middle and just try to equalize. And I think that's really what white's trying to do. So castles, bishop e3, knight c6, queen d2, rook b8, h3, bishop d7, rook fd1, queen c7, knight b3, knight e5. And um, we've got a couple games actually from here. Uh, actually, right after knight b3, we had draw agreed between Grishchuk and Bashir Lakrav. Uh, which is not a game we should take seriously, but Anand played this out against Vashir Lagrav, and um, that also ended in a draw, but after 89 moves. <laughs> so, so maybe that's the kind of respected result. But, I mean, uh, Vashir, Maxim Vashir Lagrav, just basically improves his position in the normal uh, dragon style and uh, just puts his pieces on uh, decent squares and just kind of plays for an advantage from here. But for the most part, uh, this position should be considered I guess relatively equal if white manages to keep black's uh, attempts to push d5 under wraps, uh, white should be okay. But really white isn't playing for anything. There's no kind of breakthrough that white's playing for. Uh, there's no strategy for white. There's no real plan of expansion. Uh, if you put this type of thing on an engine, again, the engine might lie to you and say that it thinks white's a little bit better just because white has more space, but there's no forward moving plan here for white. Black is going to play for d5, and white is just going to play to prevent d5. So if anybody's better, really, it's black. Uh, but, you know, the engine might lie and say that, you know, it thinks that white has a, you know, plus 0.4 or whatever the engine gives for the space that white happens to have. And certainly white is at least equal as long as black can never manage to uh, drum up some type of breakthrough. But that's basically how you respond to these three, mo three moves. Um, you know, a4, queen f3, and h3. I recommend playing g6 against all of them, and then just play your normal dragon plans. Usually white will be best placed to play some sort of castle's kingside strategy and try to play in the middle of the board to prevent uh, your early d5s and any type of uh, expansion or anything like that. Usually when, black cast when white castles queenside, white gets into significant trouble. Uh, so, anyways, uh, if you happen to know the name of A4 or Queen F3, please let me know. Put it down in the comments. I'm curious what it's called. Um, like I said, I know H3 is called the Adams Attack. I don't know the name of the other two. And uh, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess, and thank you very much for watching.